This branch of the National Railway Museum is located here at Shieldon, Durham, a small town in the northeast of England. Shieldon was the world's first railway town, and this museum, named Locomotion, is built on land offered by Sedgefield Borough Council and was officially opened in the 22nd of October 2004 by the then Prime Minister of the UK. Mr. Tony Blair, who was also the Member of Parliament for Sedgefield. In its first 12 months of operation, the museum welcomed over 210,000 visitors, well over that was expected. The museum now regularly presents special events and has become a leading attraction in the northeast of England. There are many exchanges of locomotives between the main museum in York and this one at Shieldon. Many famous steam engines visit Shieldon, such as this one, the Flying Scotsman. Another equally famous visitor was Mallard, which stayed at Shieldon for 12 months. Admission to the museum is free, but any donations are welcomed. An observant visitor will notice the wind turbine which supplies electricity to the museum and helps to keep costs down. Most of the staff having worked at this museum for many years. When you first enter this modern building, you see the friendly receptionist. I'm Helen and I've worked here for 17 years and I really love it. Were you interested in the railway before you started to work here? I absolutely was, yeah. Um, when I was 12 years old, I saw the cavalcade, that was 1975. Oh, and good. my dad had a farm over here, and uh, people packed in his field and walked over to see all the engines coming through from oh. Shilton through to Stockton, and it was amazing. Close to the reception dish is the steam locomotive named Locomotion. It was the world's first steam engine to haul a passenger train on the Stockton and Darlington line. It was designed by George Stevenson. A short distance away is another early locomotive named San Perel and was built by the superintendent of the Stockton to Darlington Railway, Timothy Hackworth. He built it in his own time with his own money. It took part in the famous Rainhill Trials, and although it was a much better steamer locomotive, it was beaten by George Stevenson's rocket. Right opposite is a replica of the San Perel. This is the museum's latest arrival. It's the original rocket, not a replica, but the real thing, as built by George Stevenson and was the winner of the Rainhill Trials. Actually, it's the wrong colour. It was originally painted yellow. This artist is obviously busy drawing the rocket. Occasionally, a working replica of George Stevenson's famous rocket visits children and by pulling a vintage railway wagon, it allows visitors to enjoy a short ride. When you're ready, Ma.
this locomotive is the Black 5 number 5000 and was built in 1935. The Black 5 was a nickname arrived at by the, the colour and part of the official name, the Stania Class 5. Drivers, firemen and train spotters loved the Black 5 engines because they could go anywhere and almost do anything and always look good doing it. The Black 5s could keep pace with some of the fastest express trains and were small and light enough to go where the biggest locomotives couldn't and 840 of them were built in about 17 years. In August 1895 this locomotive set a new speed record by achieving a top speed of over 90 miles per hour. In 1896, it was involved in a serious accident. It hit another train, killing one passenger and injuring many more. This led to the railway companies slowing down their services. They didn't really speed up again until the 1930s. This is one of the few locomotives where visitors can view the inside of the driver's cab. This locomotive has probably been seen by more people than any other steam engine. It is aptly named Winston Churchill as it was the locomotive that pulled the funeral carriages used for the war leader's last journey. Millions saw it on television all around the world. The engine was restored at Brighton Railway Workshops. The carriage that carried the coffin was restored here at Children. As the train made its way from London to Bladen, Oxfordshire, a 70 mile journey, many thousands of mourners lined the railway tracks and stood on bridges to view the train as it passed below. This museum is not confined to exhibitions of locomotives. It also has a vast collection of every type of railway equipment. This is a hand-propelled carrier called Velocipede and it was built in America and imported to Great Britain. It was used by workers to travel along the track to inspect and repair any damage. This is an old train departure information board used in every station before the advert of electronic displays. This is a specially designed cattle truck. While well, this truck is used for carrying milk churns. This is designed to carry liquids. This is a very heavy duty crane which can lift large locomotives. Many passenger coaches are on show and this one is interesting as it is the one used by royalty. The exterior of the coach is embellished with ornaments covered with gold leaf. Even the door handles display golden crowns. The museum as an area set aside for the restoration of exhibits. Here, two volunteers are at work restoring a coat.
children are not forgotten and a play area is provided for them, but it's not quite clear what they can do with the equipment provided to them, especially the models. Like all attractions, the museum has a shop and it's quite revealing to discover how expensive model locomotives can be. The lady in charge has worked in the shop for many, many years and is quite happy to talk to anybody about the history of the museum. My name is Beryl Anderson. I worked for Sedgefield Borough Council and um, this was built in 2004. Um, it was built on lottery money. It was applied for um, through um, a lottery grant. I think we were awarded something like 11.8 million at the time. The official opening was done by Tony Blair. Prior to that, the other end of the site was the home of Timothy Hackworth and it was known as Timothy Hackworth Museum. His Victorian house was formerly the museum where he lived with his wife and six children. Uh, the Sunday school was part of um, his uh, environment where he had his good shed, his Soho shed. Shildon exported trains to Russia. Finally, there is a well-stocked cafe where the visitor can eat and drink at reasonable prices. The future of locomotion is very exciting as construction has already started on another building which will exhibit a further 40 or more exhibits. This is what it was looked like when it's finished and the two buildings will make locomotion the biggest railway museum in Europe. With this good news it's time to say goodbye. Hopefully this video has whetted your appetite and that you will make a personal visit yourself. Mm -hmm.